Friday. Seller here at Kettering One, checking in with legendary 33 Killer Bees. Man, this is a really cool where I'll be talking about. Killer Bees have put so much into it this year. Take a look at this entire design. We're going to be going through so much. Uh, something called a pooper, I guess we'll be learning more about what that is. But their overall strategy has been really, really cool. So I can't wait to dive into that. And of course, all the different aspects of it. Some cool stuff with code. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. I did a Mary Rose. Let's start jumping into some of the cool aspects of the robot. We mentioned the pooper. Talk to me about what it is and some of the strategy behind it. Yeah, so some of our strategy behind it is when at the beginning of the season we decided this would be more of like a passing game than um, a cycling game, like similar to like last year. So we made this so it was pretty much just one big shooter. So this over here is one shooter, and then this is another shooter down here. So it's very, we got a lot of questions when we revealed the robot about why we have three Krakens on our intake. This is why, because it's basically a shooter. So I'm going to be talking more in depth about the intake. So um, our intake has, a, it's an under the bumper intake because uh, we believe that's the easiest way to get contested notes when we're going against other teams. Um, we have these flappers on the edges to help guide the notes into the center so that we uh, we can get them into the robot in more streamlined fashion. We also have this, this is our pooper. So instead of having to directly shoot out of our main shooter, we have a secondary um, shooter, which we call the pooper, to just pass across the field if we want to bring it to the other team. Quick. Talk to me about the uh, game strategy behind wanting to go this route. Uh, you know, with especially having this where it just kind of almost snow plows sometimes and other times you're just shooting across the field. Uh, when did this uh, come up and how did it influence your design overall? Well, we decided in the beginning, as Aiden said, that this is a passing game instead of just a cycling game. We believe that the fastest way to score um, a bunch of notes is to pass it to our side of the field and then you shoot them all at once, especially with the amplification part of the game. Um, it's much easier to get the, ampli the maximum amplification bonus um, when you have a bunch of um, notes already on your side of the field. As we break down your intake of what you have here, talk to me more about how, what went into the packaging and doing this, because I mean, overall, this is a very well packaged machine, but you got a lot going on in a small space. Talk to me more about that. So we, know, we knew we wanted a small robot because we wanted to have an incredibly fast machine so we could um, get notes to our side of the field as fast as possible. So we wanted our robot to be small, so it's designed to be tightly packaged. Um, you know, our intake looks very chaotic, but it's just to make sure that the note can um, go through all of the bends because um, it's, a, it's a very small space, so the note can go through all of the bends and reach the shooter in a way that it's already ready to shoot. And Aiden, let's talk about that shooter more and uh, how that process works. Uh, a lot of versatility uh, for what you have here. So demonstrate and, and kind of break down really what goes into it. Yeah, this shooter has got to be one of my favorite um, parts of the robot. So we found out a lot during testing that the consistent um, feeding of the note really impacted how flat the note would be. So we have this 775 here that feeds this little one-way bearing roller that will work so we'll pull it through the shooter, as I will show you right now. So this is really cool because it's got one more roller on this side than it has on this side. So that means we can put a little bit of spin on it without having software to do that. And it just makes it so our shots are more flat than bumpy. I really like that. But my favorite feature of this got to be the amp part of this. So the amp feature has got to be one of the greatest. We've got this flip up hood by a four bar um, link. It's pretty great. So I'm going to show it here. So 
So the robot, just like that, will just um, shoot the note out of the uh, shooter, redirect it with these spinning rollers here, and it will go straight in the amp and straight down. Overall, uh, from an amp perspective, did you have to make any changes like when you're looking at the priority uh, for what the amp is over the season, or did this always just integrate with your shooter really well? Um, absolutely. We used to have a uh, little diverter here, so we would just put a little piece here that would try and divert it, but that wasn't really working well. So we decided that this hood would work better after seeing other robots use it and use it pretty well. So we decided that that would be more consistent and we haven't had any problems with it since. It's been great and it's been fast. Uh, also, the other thing I want to talk about uh, you, from a sensor standpoint, you have quite a few limelights on it. So talking about how you're utilizing those on the field to give you uh, the feedback that your team needs. Yeah, so these limelights get us um, our positioning at all times and they will, they will aim towards the goal for us at like up to 12 feet away from the speaker. It will aim and change RPM based on how far we away from the speaker. It's really cool. And the one over here we use as a POV camera for now, but that one has future things later to come that Ethan will talk about. But yeah, I really like the limelights and how they assist the driver. So looking at your dashboard so far, it's mostly just the POV cam that we're seeing. Uh, did you get any other feedback for your drivers? Yeah, we, we got also the front two cameras. If we really wanted to see those ones, we can. We have these, this one's the left one here, and then this one's the right one here. So we can see out of those as well. And we have our POV camera. Let's talk about some future plans, Ethan, and what's going into 33. I mean, you know, as we're recording this, we're halfway through day one here at Kettering One. Uh, but I know your team has a lot of uh, big ambitions uh, moving forward for future ones. So what do you have planned so far? So yeah, we already have some future plans for development for this robot. So we really want to revamp our shooter to avoid um, some inefficiency and parasitic loss. We also want to revamp our intake to make it more efficient. And we also want to add some note detection software, which will improve cycle times and game piece acquisition. Uh, what about uh, like climber and trap wise? Anything uh, looking forward to on that? So currently we don't actually score on the trap. We we did have a um, we did have a mechanism called the Dutch exit, but we had to get rid of that. And that you can see this flap cover is that this flap is in the area where this gate used to be. So we're gonna definitely put a lot of effort in towards developing a better trap scoring mechanism for use in further competitions. Well, 33 Killer Bees, congratulations on the great robot so far. Uh, I think you're going to do great here at Kettering, but we can't wait to see how you continue to iterate through the season. So thanks for telling us about your robot. There's a lot of great things to learn here, and good luck here at the competition. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.